Hi there, it's Jao Pierre Ruth with Information Week back at you again with yet another reporter's notebook. And this time I'm going to talk a bit about actually let me turn my sound off. This time I'm going to talk a bit about uh, Information Week's coverage and our focus and emphasis on enterprise IT strategy and trends. And I apologize that I'm a bit dressed down today, but at the very least I am wearing, can you even see the logo? I'm wearing my Information Week uh, sweatshirt at this time. Um, but yeah. So, again, Information Week's coverage focuses on the technology, particularly the IT uh, matters that enterprise scale companies uh, focus on or have to contend with. We are more likely to cover, all right, let's, let's back up. Oftentimes people, when they think about technology news and technology coverage, they think about just like, okay, there's a, this announcement, this product is out, this service is coming out, this iteration, this integration is, com is happening. That's, again, I've said this before in the prior video, but I'm going to reiterate that that is not something that we specialize in. We don't do product reviews. We don't do the, you know, this is the latest, greatest of this. Uh, we focus, again, on strategy and trends in enterprise IT. And what that means is not likely to cover say um this particular startup has come out with this uh new this one lone startup has come out with this one product or this or you know name any of the big players coming out with something we are more interested in discussing how an enterprise scale company might approach a latest regulation that's going to affect the way that they handle data privacy or data governance you know, those kinds of things. We were more interested in understanding, you know, and are covering, covering our stories, what your organization or what an enterprise scale organization's policy and approach is going to be in terms of how they may or may not make use of generative AI, the questions that they have to consider in terms of how the uh, AI is, is trained and, and, you know, how the data is sourced and, and whether or not, depending on what the output of that generative AI that they might make use of, is something that they then have to worry about, you know, well, well, who's originating this? Who owns this? Where does this come from? Uh, you know, those are the kinds of questions that we actually are focusing on. I personally am very focused on those kinds of things. Um, I'm very interested in those kinds of topics. But again, it is focused on the enterprise scale company as opposed to the very small to mid-sized companies. And why is there a difference in, in approach there? Well, with an enterprise scale company, you have you know operations potentially of uh, offices and and other personnel across time zones, across continents. You might have uh, different you know jurisdictions that that you have to adhere and comply with, whether it's by different states or you know international uh, operations where you have very different. Uh, tiers or layers of policy that are in play right now. Uh, just you know, look at anything coming out of the EU in terms of you know, their momentum when it comes to uh, putting out policies directed at the technology space, whether it's you know GDPR or other aspects of technology that are gaining momentum in terms of policy and regulatory uh, input coming in. The United States is catching up, but again, the idea of speaking to what enterprise scale organizations uh, uh, are thinking about, planning for, preparing for, have in play already. Those are the kinds of topics that, that we are, are very interested in because you know, those kinds of organizations you know, have a different set of needs versus say an organization that is in a smaller market. This is not to, again, a lot of my career, I covered small business. You know, I covered small businesses in New Jersey for you know, I want to say 12, almost 13, I guess 13 years, if I think about it. And then after that, I was covering startups in the New York scene. So, you know, these are, these are, those are areas I understand and appreciate, but at the same time, Information, Week, Information Week's coverage is really focused on what is happening at the enterprise scale, uh, what is happening with organizations, um, you know, of particular, of, you know, of the size with those kinds of very specific, um, you know, kind of issues. And this can also be mean, you know, the training volumes of people, or looking for looking for volumes of customers, or, or not, volumes of people, and you know things at scale. And that is a very different kind of uh, news coverage than, say, you know, again, 
looking at some of the smaller markets. Um, and I'm actually noticing that my camera is a little bit off kilter. So I'm going to like tilt my head a little bit this way to, anyway, again, you're seeing how the sausage is made. All right. So this was just, again, that, that part was to reiterate what information week, uh, covers and why we focus on the enterprise, um, space. Now, um, something I want, something I wanted to add in terms of my personal approach to coverage, um, and I'll make sure that this was clearly, you know, laid out in the headline for this video, uh, AI and email content. Um, start with email content, e email comments, email commentary. Oftentimes you'll get uh, someone in public, rela public relations who may want to just, you know, they might be, want me to be aware of one of their clients when there's yeah, as a potential source, uh, somebody to interview. And that's great. Um, sometimes though, there will be not even a pitch, they will just kind of like, forward email commentary to me and then ask if I'm going to publish it. And the answer is no. Um, you know, I, that one, you know, taking unsolicited comments is something I'm not interested in. I haven't even asked a question yet. Um, so to just kind of like, I'm like, and it, to be, yeah, I understand you've worked very hard on preparing these comments. However, you need to understand that, you know, by the fact that the nature that I have not asked a specific question or, you know, had a chance to do any kind of back and forth, this is not something that I'm going to actually use. I might look over those comments, glance at it, and then say, okay, I would like actually to establish an interview. Sure, understand that, but a very, very small uh, portion of the scene of the community, uh, the public relations community might say, hey, did you publish my, you know, those email comments I sent over to you? And it's like, no. Have you ever seen us do that? Um, again, understanding that there are some places, some times and spaces where just taking those email comments and plugging them in, um, for a quick response yeah, is, is what, what some organizations might do. And there, there might be, there might be that, that blanket statement that an organization might make when there's something that they're not going to give interviews about. And I think I spoke about a bit about that last time, but when I get further into the why about with no email commentary and why I do not conduct any interviews um, via email, the it's not just about the format of email, but it is also about the the broader context of what potentially can happen. Um, when I get when I see email commentary, and again, this is my personal preference. Other journalists, other people on our team work fine uh, via via email, but. My concern is that one, again, I don't have the chance to do an immediate back and forth and follow up when I get you know, email responses, um, you know, email commentary. Uh, yes, you can exchange emails back and forth, but there is a need of immediacy for my part to say, hey, wait a minute, you just said a particular thing. I want to follow up and ask you about that. You know, um, again, Sure, I could take the time and wait to have the emails bounce back and forth, but again, you get to a point where it's like, all right, why am I not just interviewing you? So that's my personal preference uh, on that. The other aspect of it is, and this is why I'm gonna get into why AI ties into it. The other aspect is uh, essential of the, the, I guess the ownership of the commentary, of, of, the, of the input that's being given. Yeah, I'm not interested in the, I personally am not interested in what potentially could be something that is presented to me that has been filtered through uh, several lawyers and a marketing person. I'm not saying that, you know, people are being automatically disingenuous by sending email commentary, but at the same time, there is the potential that, you know, these are not the words of the person that I'm trying to actually get uh, input from. We'll get into some specifics and, and then, you know, tying in AI, yeah, the, I've definitely spoken to various professionals who are saying like, hey, you know, they've been making use of generative AI to help them, you know, pull the, bring their thoughts together to, to then write things. I understand that. And again, that I'm don't, the idea of having something that potentially, not everything, but, but the potential that the words might have been filtered through others, it might not have been even written by the person in question, might have potentially been drafted by generative AI. 
those are now about we've now added layers onto why I personally do not work with email commentary but this isn't to say that email is the only potential culprit where you know the authority of 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 who who's saying uh, who's who's behind these words can be called in question uh, within the past five years actually um, you know while I was here with information week I right, there's one particular incident set up an interview uh, with the source and the day came for the interview um, and the interview starts, but they're not there. You know, it's on camera. So I'm seeing who I'm talking to and it's a different person. And this is like, oh, hey, this person's doing the interview. There was no preamble, no alert saying that the person that I originally had booked the interview with was not going to be available. Um, they, they're just, you know, this person was, in, you know, on camera, with, you know, you know, for the interview, it wasn't a, like any, it was not for any kind of stream or anything like that. So I was going to have the chance to process what our discussion in the interview. And the person answered questions. They were nice. They were, they're amiable. But the problem was, and I started to realize after, and then I, you know, got a hold of their title. What it was, was that oh, rather giving answers. And I felt this was while they were speaking, they were not, the, the answers that they were given, you know, the, the questions I was asking were driven by the idea of, you know, this is, uh, you know, this, this, this interviews, you know, I think I think actually, hang on, I think, I think my oh, focus is a little off. Back at it. Okay, hopefully we're back in focus this time. Okay, so where was I? Um, conducting this interview, and again, I started to realize that this was that the, their their answers, responses were not really to the more technical or even operational side. They were more of a marketing, uh, marketing oriented uh, response. So that you know. That you know, raised some red flags for me. And then afterwards, I asked the the initial person, the initial contact, um, "Hey, what, what's going on here? You know, this isn't who we booked." And they said, "Oh yeah, um, they they were actually unavailable. You know, we we booked this interview, you know, you know, days or whatever time in advance." Um, but then they said that I could use that this marketing person's uh, comments as that other person's commentary. That's a hard no. Um, I informed the PR person that no, I'm t I'm I'm canning this interview. I'm not going to be using it. Not going forward with the story, and I'm no longer going to work with that particular PR person. And I'm not going to work with their firm anymore. They're on my blacklist, and I'm not going to work with their client because the idea that I'm going and this has happened in so many other ways to your other scene where someone will say here use this name, use these comments, use these words. And you can attribute it to so and so that you are not actually speaking with, and I appreciate that others might operate that way, but that's just mm -mm, no, no, no. That's a, that's a that's a hard pass from JP. Um, and this is, I think, particularly important uh, now these days, uh, as we're in a time where um, so many people are are questioning the veracity of the content they're saying, um, questioning, you know, you know. Is this video you're watching right now? Is it actually a deep fake? I mean, hopefully, with with the with the you know potential issues with with my focus, you can see that it's not a deep fake. But the but the notion that that we are we are really like layering upon layering upon laying, you know, how much distrust there could be for media could be for the content that we're that we're making use of. Um, you know, the the idea that that. That I'm going to, you know, invite somebody to say, okay, you're not the person I actually want to interview. You're going to say some words, and I'm going to take those words, and I'm going to slap this person's name on it, saying they're going to, that they made those comments, not tell my audience that I didn't actually interview this person. And then, not only does that open up me for, for you know, the, the question of, like, you know, audience saying like, hey, you know, our readership, our, our, our audience saying, hey, you know, we can't trust you. Um, but then the organization, the, you know, the company or whoever it is that I originally sought to interview could come, could come back and say, hey, that person didn't actually say that. Why did you run that? 
even though that might have been an agreed upon thing, you know, they, they, it is too much game playing. It is too much game playing. And now in this era of AI, particularly generative AI, you know, uh, I'm def I definitely seek to have direct first hand interviews with somebody, you know, for the ability to, uh, you know, do follow up immediate questions during the course of the conversation. And even more so to actually be, be absolutely, absolutely clear. I am speaking to the person that I intended to speak to and they responded directly to the questions that I had. You know, that's, that's I mean, the, those, it sounds so basic. It sounds almost corny, but that's what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, so yeah, the idea of, again, email commentary, the opening the door for others to write something and just kind of like hand it over and be like, here, attribute it to so-and-so. No, thank you. Not doing that. Um, and again, you know, wanting to have that opportunity to, you know, if it's not face-to-face, -face, you know, you know, over the phone, uh, you know, via video, uh, any opportunity, any way that we can facilitate a direct, you know, one-to-one you know, -one conversation is what I personally uh, aim for. Again, Plenty of others who, even on our team, who will work with online email commentary. And I appreciate that. It is my personal preference and my personal approach because, you know, I'm a bit of a, I've become a bit of a curmudgeon uh, about things. So that is, that is why. And, and honestly, and I've, I've kind of shared on the podcast uh, my particular, uh, you know, concerns and thoughts about AI for, for the past months, uh, past years or so. Uh, it's not just that, you know, the, oh no, you're worried about somebody, you know, AI taking your job. It's, it's no, it's, it's the idea that we're going to allow that kind of content to, you know, potentially be unchecked, which other outlets have done. You make use of that and then just kind of get out there and then have to, after the fact, try to explain to our, explain to our audience uh, why the errors are made, why things went wrong. Um, and, and that's not something that I want to engage in. I don't think there, there, there are people on our team and we've actually put, again, put out, I think I mentioned this in the prior video, we've put out, yeah, you know, our, our expectations in terms of like how we're going to approach and, you know, essentially not make use of, uh, any kind of generative AI for our content, um, for our stories. Um, so I think that's about it for this notebook. Um, just a quick note that there's not going to be a podcast recording this Friday because I am actually going to be off as of 5 o'clock today. I'm going to be off from Wednesday through next Monday. There will be a podcast uh, recording the, um, the, which I guess will be the, uh, the 8th, the November the 8th. I have posted on my LinkedIn page what the topics are going to be for the podcast for the month of November. Please take a look at those. Uh, and until next time.